It's bright here. Yeah? Yahweh, you have a decision to make. Well, what decision? Are you going to leave your creation to its own devices, or are you going to interact with it? I definitely want to interact with it. <laughs> you didn't even hesitate to answer. So? So, you already know how you intend to interact, don't you? Yeah, I've got a plan. Such a thing is not to be taken lightly, Yahweh. Do you plan to reveal your true nature to your creation? Of course. How will you do that? I'm gonna do it over there. Come, let's take a closer look, shall we? Here. Here? Only here? Yeah. This general area. This is where I'm gonna reveal myself to my chosen people. And give, give them my commands. I see. And what will be your goal in doing this? To be loved. And... 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 It's okay. You can tell me. And worshipped. And if they don't? Then... They'll perish. Yahweh, follow me. This general area, from the Tigris in the east to the Mediterranean in the west, and from Mount Ararat in the north to the Nile in the south, this tiny section of your creation will encompass the entirety of your interactions, recorded within your sacred texts. Tiny? Th this is a rather significant portion of land, if you ask me. Oh, it surely is, Yahweh, but this is hardly the extent of your creation. While you involve yourself with the traditions and politics of this little area of the world, the rest of the planet will continue in its many diverse ways without your interactions. They will develop their own religions and cultures, many of which will conflict with the ones you grace. From the many tribes of Africa, to the Celts of Europe, and to the rest of Asia, Buddhists and Hindus of China and India, vast land masses populated by billions of people. You will not interact with them. What of Indonesia and Australia? Across vast oceans, the tribes of North America will be ignorant of your earthly interventions, as will the Aztecs and Mayans of Central America and the Incas of South America, entire continents of your creation inhabited by countless generations who will know nothing of your dire message. In fact, they'll each invent their own versions of gods who will echo their specific cultural values no differently than your chosen people will echo yours, so you will seem like just another invented god, sharing the same cultural values as the people in the one area with which you will interact. That is a significant coincidence, Yahweh, for as some will eventually notice, gods always behave like the people who create them. So, you think I should just go around revealing myself to all these civilizations? <laughs> go around? No, Yahweh, you're omnipresent, so you're already among them, always. Why remain hidden to those in South America, but not to those in the Middle East? Why would mere geography affect an omnipresent God's interaction with his creation? Geography should only affect man-made gods. 
Given your plan here, I'm beginning to wonder why any human beings should exist beyond the Middle East at all. Come with me, Yahweh. Let's look at the bigger picture. Around half of the people on Earth will eventually develop religions based on your existence, and those religions will violently conflict with each other. Whether they believe the Earth is the place you sent your one and only son to be sacrificed, or that Muhammad was your prophet, or that the Jews are your chosen people, it's all about Earth. But look around. There are other planets here, revolving around this star. And this star, this massive object that's 1.3 million times larger than the Earth, is actually microscopic compared to the rest of the galaxy, which has hundreds of billions of stars, with systems of planets also numbering in the hundreds of billions, of which at least 8.8 .8 billion are Earth-sized and inhabitable zones. Now, we could cross this galaxy if we traveled at light speed for a hundred thousand years. Yet even this incomprehensibly massive galaxy is microscopic. Because there are hundreds of billions of galaxies. Try to wrap your mind around that. There's roughly 7.5 quintillion grains of sand on Earth in every ocean, beach, and desert combined, yet there's octillions of stars in the universe. You knew that, though, because you are omnipresent, which means you're simultaneously amongst each and every one of those octillions of stars and all their systems of planets. And of all those many worlds, you're going to send your one and only son to a tiny area on one planet. Or have Muhammad convey your message there, or declare that the Jews there are your chosen people. You're going to do everything on that little area of land, and have the few primitive bipedal organisms who happen to live there write down conflicting accounts about it on little pieces of parchment, so that it can be shared and fought over with other primitive bipedal organisms on a single world amongst octillions. That will be the extent of your sacred recorded interactions with this massive creation. Tell me, Yahweh, why have you decided to limit yourself this way? Because I, I wanted it to be a, a clockwork universe. You see how precise it is? It all runs automatically. If I wanted to do that, then this is how it needs to be. But you're God. Yeah? So? You have unlimited power, so you need the universe to run automatically to what end? You don't need to concentrate, you don't need to conserve energy, you don't need to devote time or resources elsewhere because you have unlimited time, unlimited resources. Yahweh, one day, people will be able to look beyond Earth. And where once they thought they'd find you, instead they're going to find countless other worlds and stars and galaxies. They're going to find a clockwork universe, automatic, running and dying, all on its own, according to the laws of nature, without requiring an omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, omnibenevolent, spaceless, timeless, supernatural being to run anything. Ah, but... But they're going to ask who created those finely tuned laws of nature. Uh, the design of the universe itself will be the evidence of my existence and nature. Will it? The question of fine tuning will be inevitable, indeed, because each and every unknown that was attributed to your doing will eventually be discovered to be nature's doing. The question itself, however, will lead to an infinite regress. Why would you need to finely tune the laws of nature unless you were being restricted by some other laws beyond your control? And who created the laws that govern the necessity for God to fine tune the laws of nature? If these laws dictated the nature of your creation, then how could you be called omnipotent? How could you be called God? if your creation could only be created in one kind of way. 
If the laws of nature could only be one kind of way to permit life, and if the universe runs all on its own, then what does it need with a god? Because if that's the case, then you didn't actually design anything. You merely followed a set of instructions. Whose instructions? The presence of an all-powerful god doesn't explain anything at all. In your current state, I'm afraid, you are ridiculously superfluous. Okay. Then... What would be a better way to, to fulfill my plan? I don't think you really want to hear the answer to that. I do. Just tell me. First, treat people equally. Do not have a chosen people and do not rely upon flawed human beings to spread your message, for they will corrupt it to achieve their own ends. Instead, you yourself should convey your message to everyone in your creation equally, with consideration to their unique standards across all seven continents on Earth and everywhere on every other planet with intelligent life. That way, there could be no misunderstanding or deception regarding your message. Do not attempt to convince or coerce people to love you through rewards or punishments. It's not real love if it's not born of one's own volition. Do not make a clockwork universe. Create a universe that demands your presence and interaction in order to run, so that it will make absolutely no sense unless you are there to run it as an integral cog in the machine. That way, when people see the universe, they will not see an automatic universe like it is now, running and dying all on its own. They'll see a universe in which you are completely inextricable and undeniable. And if I just keep the universe the way it is? This is the incomprehensibly vast and indifferent universe that is exactly what we would expect to see if left to its own devices, ungoverned by any gods. And the many religions of Earth are exactly what we would expect to see of humans who utilized invented gods to achieve their own human ends. If you truly cared to commune with your creation, then you've gone about it in the exact opposite of the way you should have. Curious, isn't it, God? God?